Hi friends, welcome to my channel VLSI Gyan. Friends, in this session we will discuss about FPGA design flow. So before going to the video, I request you if you are watching for the first time, please subscribe to my channel to get all the stuff related to VLSI. Friends, we know that we have FPGAs and ASICs. So also the difference between the FPGA and ASIC, we know that FPGA is used for prototyping. It is it can be used for redesigning purpose and all these are the advantages and disadvantages we have already discussed. And I hope that is clear to you all. So when you are programming a FPGA, so what is the design flow? What are the steps involved that we are, what, that we are going to discuss in this video? So friends, you will find many uh, design flow charts but this is the one which is actually explains each and every step of the FPGA design flow. So friends, when you want to design something and you want the code to be dumped into the FPGA and you check whether it is working properly or not, so for that you need to uh, follow these steps. So first of all, whether the design is small or big, whatever the design it is, there it will be having some specifications. Specifications means what is the function it has to perform, what are the inputs, outputs, and all this, and the functionality, all these things. So when we have all this given, so we can have a design entry. Design entry is the first step, friends. Here, what we do is we try to capture the specification into a form, whether either it can be a schematic or it can be using a hardware description language. So the hardware description language, which is mostly used uh, is very long. We can also go for VHDL. So once you are given the specification, you uh, go for the design entry. What you do here, you write, try to write the code or uh, a schematic. Then what we do is if the it, if we have used a HDL hardware description language, then friends, you can see that we go for the behavioral simulation. What is this behavioral simulation? Friends, first of all, simulation. Simulation is the process in which we give the certain inputs and we try to check whether we are getting the correct output or not. So based on our specification, we have designed a code and now we are checking whether the code is perfectly working or not with the given set of the inputs. So if it is not working, then again, we go back to the design entry. We try to modify our code. If the code is working properly, then what is the next step? Constraints. See, constraints are nothing but these are the uh, set of the uh, rules or you can say set of the uh, instructions given by the user to the tool that these are things to be followed. Like we have different constraint, timing constraints, area constraints and all so that we can mention, uh, mention in the design. Okay, so these constraints, after this constraints, what we do is the next step is the synthesis. Synthesis, friends, is nothing but it is the process in which your circuit uh, is generated. Like you have already uh, created a code. So the code is converted into a circuit. Like suppose you are writing a AND gate code. So that code will be converted into an actual AND gate circuit here, right? And it will be saved in the NGC file. Next comes the translate. Friends, you can see the translate, map, and place, and route. route. So these three combinedly called as implementation. Okay, translate, map, place, and route. These three steps are combinedly called as implementation. So what we do, we translate the synthesis, whatever the, we got it, like the circuit which we got, that we need to translate. The Like if we are combining all the constraints and the circuit and create a file. Then in the map process, what we do is we know that FPGA is made up of logical blocks, configurable logical blocks, IOs, switch matrices, and all this. So we actually want to map our circuit to that logic. So that is mapping. The next step is place and route. So friends, there are certain things that how you place the blocks plays a very important role. Suppose if you are placing the blocks near to an IO, the time will be saved. At the same time, there will be some other disadvantage. So it is up to the place and route tool to see the trade-off between whatever is the correct or the most uh, possible uh, place for a particular sub-block or a block to be placed on the FPG. So when this is done, then we go for the generation of the file. 
now what we have done till now we whatever the design we have created that we have converted into a circuit and the circuit is converted into the logical blocks and then it is targeted to the fpga okay but the fpga won't be able to take it so for that we need to convert the this into a form so that the fpga is able to take it so that is nothing a bit file okay so the fpga will be able to take it as a bit file so we need to convert the above uh, place and route information of the synthesized design into a bit file. So this is nothing but a bit file generation. Bit file is generated. Once you are generating the bit file, then you can connect with your FPGA and you can dump the code. Okay. So this is the process. So in between, we have, you can see that we have functional simulation here. That can be done after the translate and also after the map and also after the place and route. So what is this functional uh, simulation? So if the functional simulation is nothing but it again checks whether the design is working properly according to our requirement or not at different stages. Earlier we checked the behavior like we have generated the uh, Verilog code and just or Verilog or VHDL code and we have given the inputs and we try to check whether we are getting it or not. But at this stage, you have some constraints also added. You have converted that into a actual circuit, and then you have translated into uh, translated, and then you are mapping. So at this time again, you are checking whether it is perfectly giving you the required output or not. If it is not giving, then again we need to make the changes in the design, okay, or changes in the constraints or modify settings for the previous steps, or we have to change some previous steps okay so this is how the functional simulation at this point is now we have also static timing analysis so friends you can see that static timing analysis can be done after the mapping and after the place and route so here you will be getting the map ngc file ngc is nothing but native generic uh, circuit file and this is routed native generic circuit file so static timing analysis is nothing but it is a, a tool which is checking whether the design is working properly with respect to timing or not okay so there should not be much delay there should not be any slacks and all so the timing tool will analyze that and we will get a generated timing report so friends this is how our fpga design flow works so once again we will clearly try to understand so as i said the first one is design entry so what is design ent design entry is nothing but is it here you can enter your design you can specify the requirements of your design in the form of a schematic or in the form of a language that is hdl or verilog or combination of these two next next as we have seen it is the synthesis process Synthesis is nothing but which converts the Verilog or VHDL code into a device netlist form. That is nothing but a circuit. Then comes the implementation. As I said, implementation is a process where it com contains three stages. What are the three stages? Translation, mapping, and place and route. So translate, what it does, combines all the netlist. Netlist is nothing but it is the output of the synthesis. Okay. And the constraints, the constraints, user constraints, and the, all are added in the form of a logical design file, are converted into a logical design file. And it saves it as a NGD, that is native generic database. Okay. Then mapping. This process divides the whole circuit into sub blocks such that they can be fit into the FPGA logical blocks and generate a NCD, native circuit description file. Like the circuit which we have generated in the synthesis is again converted into sub blocks is divided into sub blocks so that it can be properly uh, fit into the fpga blocks okay like we have clbs flip flops and also it should be possible to put this logic into that particular one then the last one is place and route. It places the sub block from the map process into the logical blocks according to the constraints and connect the logic blocks according to the constraints like we have given certain constraints so for the pins and all we have certain constraints and so all checking all these things this place and route will place and it will generate again a native circuit description file and this is now routed fully routed native circuit description file then 
this routed NCDF file is converted to dot bit file by the bit gen program. Okay, so here why it is required to convert a bit gen program because the FPGA will not be able to take the design if it is in another format. So it can only take it in the form of bits. So here we are converting it into the form of a bit file. A bit file is used to target the FPGA device. So this is how our device is targeted and we are connecting it. So using the cables, finally you will join uh, the system with the FPGA and you will be uploading, okay? So as I discussed earlier, behavioral simulation performed before the synthesis. Remember, behavioral simulation is done before the synthesis. In synthesis, you will get an uh, idea about how, what are the resources required and all, but that is not the correct one. Later, it can change. After the implementation only, you will be able to know how much is the resources required for a particular design. Verifies the RTL code to confirm that the design is functioning as intended. At the very first level, the code is working properly or not, it will check. Later, you when you go for the functional simulation, that time there are the chances that the behavioral simulation and the functional simulation may vary because we have certain processes in between like the map, place, and route, translate. So these are the some uh, two um, process where optimization may take place. Because of this optimization, some of the uh, unused, uh, unused uh, uh, pins and all can be removed. Okay, ports can be removed. So here you can see that there is some variation in the resource utilization report. So post simulation can be done after the translate process or we after the place and route. So when it is done after the translate, it verifies the functionality of the design after the translate. So at this stage again, it checks. So this is before the mapping, right? And after mapping and place and route verifies the functionality of the design after place and route, whether it is functioning properly or not, because now you have placed everything. So uh, is there any time delay? Is there any slack, positive or negative slack? How the circuit is behaving because of this slack? Is there any functional error or any functionality is uh, compromised? So all this kind of the information you will get in the functional simulation. Static timing analysis, as I said, it is a process in which the it is we use a tool for performing the static timing analysis and it helps us to tell how our design is working with respect to the time, right? So performed at different stages, post map, mapping, after mapping, we can do static timing analysis where we can check whether the design is working, working properly or not. Here we have the different constraints like hold time, setup time, then input output delay, uh, multi-cycle false path, so all these things will be checked. And uh, is there any clock domain crossing issues because of that there is any uh, slack is generated, whatever it is. So everything you will come to know in the static timing analysis. So two stages, you can go for static timing analysis. This is post map and post PNR. So if both in both the cases, if you are not getting any uh, problem in the static timing analysis, then you can say that the uh, design is working properly. So friends, this is about the FPGA design flow. I hope this has given you a clear idea about what are the steps we need to follow to program a FPGA? Uh, please stay connected. Please subscribe, like, and share. I'll be coming with more stuff like this. Thank you. Thanks for watching.